Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I got a question today to answer about fuel economy on tractors and about horsepower. And the answer to both of these questions goes toward the north up here, Lincoln, Nebraska. And it's a place you may not know exists, but if you're in the farm equipment business, you know about it. It's kind of the holy grail of horsepower and fuel economy and all of that. The Nebraska Tractor Test Lab. And I'll tell you a little story about where that all came from and where you can find unbiased information about tractor fuel economy and horsepower. Well, let's look at the letters today. First one comes from Kenneth. And Kenneth said, is there a ratio between engine horsepower, PTO horsepower, and drawbar horsepower? And I'll, I'll kind of not answer that, but I'll tell you where you can find out all those numbers and, and it's unbiased information. And the second question, and I've been anticipating one of these questions since uh, fuel prices started going up here a few weeks ago, this comes from Alvi. And Alvi says, with diesel prices going up, is there a place I can go to find out how much fuel a tractor uses, like gas mileage estimates on cars? Now, to answer both of these questions, that they all lead to Lincoln, Nebraska, and the Nebraska Test Laboratory. And let me tell you how the Nebraska Test Laboratory came to be what it's done over the years, and what, what it is today. Well, in 1919, and, and that tells you how, how far back it goes that people didn't hit it off well with their local dealer. There was a guy in Nebraska that bought a tractor, and the dealer told him, and it was advertised, that it would pull three plows. And he got it out to the field, it'd only pull one plow. Couldn't pull even two plows. And so he went back to the dealer, said this tractor won't do what you said it would do and the dealer ended up taking it back and giving giving him another tractor that was advertised to pull three plows and he was able to pull five plows with it well it just so happened this guy was in the state legislature in the state of nebraska back when farmers could also be lawmakers and he went back to the uh, state capitol and the legislative session and decided it was time to make a law to hold manufacturers accountable for horsepower claims. And the law that he introduced, got passed, established the Nebraska Test Lab at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. And what the Nebraska Test Lab did is it established scientific standards and a facility for testing horsepower, both PTO horsepower, drawbar horsepower, fuel economy, and a whole bunch of other stuff on modern farm tractors. And that was in 1919, and they have the tests for every tractor that has been through that facility clear back to that date. There are some tests back there after the law was passed from 1920. And if you're a tractor equipment geek like I am, it's kind of interesting information. But what they did is establish all this criteria and a, and a set of standards that every manufacturer had to meet to get their horsepower tested. And so what they did was they said, we'll allow you to sell tractors in Nebraska if you have your tractors tested. And if you don't have your tractors tested, they can't be sold here. And so for many, many years, you'd look in a brochure and you'd see not for sale in Nebraska. And you're like, why, why does it say not for sale in Nebraska? Well, it hadn't been tested. And they started out every tractor above like I want to say 20 horsepower had to be tested to be sold in Nebraska. And then that number went up to like 40 horsepower. And that was 40 PTO horsepower. And today, that number's up to 100 PTO horsepower. And they've changed the rules a little bit. Now, any tractor can be sold in Nebraska. But if you want tax exempt on the tractors over 100 horsepower, you have to have a tractor, you have to buy a tractor that's been tested at the Nebraska test labs. But if you want to go back and look at tractors all the way back to the 20s, and a lot of Avery's and Rumley's and uh, brands that aren't around, Alice Chalmers, and um, I'm trying to think of all the brands, but a whole bunch of brands that aren't around anymore were tested at the Nebraska Test Laboratory. Now, I'm going to put a link up here somewhere. It's called a card you can click on, and you can go see all the results all the way back to the 20s on my website. I've got that on there. And it's, it's separated by, by models and, and, and by years and all that. And if you click on the test, you can go see how the tractor did. 
and you'll find out what the PTO horsepower was, what the drawbar horsepower was, and all that stuff, and the fuel economy. Now, the problem with this test, a lot of you guys that watch my channel are, are small tractor owners. And so today, most of the tractors tested are up above 100 horse. Up until a few years ago, it was up to 40, over 40 horse. So it's, it doesn't have a lot of value if you're buying a new tractor and it's under 100 PTO horsepower. But definitely if you're buying a big tractor, if you farm, those are good numbers to go look at. Or if you're buying an older used tractor and you're worried about how much fuel is this going to use, go look at the numbers and see if your tractor is listed on there. But it's fairly fascinating. I own a Massey 362 that I inherited from my dad, and here's the tra tractor test data on it. And it'll tell you how it did in the tractor test, and they run them around a track, they, they run them on a dynamometer to find out the PTO horsepower, they find out how much they can pull. And getting back to Kenneth's question, uh, there's not a set ratio between the horsepowers. If you look at the difference between engine horsepower and PTO horsepower, those numbers are different and PTO horsepower will always be less because there's parasitic loss between the engine and the PTO. Like a hydrostatic drive tractor takes more horsepower than a gear drive. So your hydros will have a little less horsepower than your, uh, than your gear drives in, on the PTO. Engine and horsepower can be the same, but everything that happens behind that engine, the power steering, the hydraulics, uh, the, uh, the gearing, the, the uh, way of propelling the tractor, that all loses power. And that's how you get to PTO horsepower. And, uh, and uh, draw bar horsepower is something they figure at the university uh, uh, test lab there. Uh, and I don't exactly know how they do it. But that's the history of the Nebraska test lab. And they have a ton of information there. And if you're buying in a, a new tractor that's big or an older use tractor and you're concerned about fuel prices, go look at their numbers and you'll find out exactly where your tractor stands. Appreciate you watching my videos. I survive on web traffic. And I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm getting close to 100,000 subscribers and you can help me. Just click the Mike Face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with unique items for sale for the tractor owner that helps support my channel. And here's another video you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.